All right, we got us a true reach-in cooler. It's a T49. Two of that fans on it. I went ahead and took the fans out because I want to find out whether or not this thing's got a refrigerant issue or if it's a thermostat issue. The customer's complaint is it was freezing things. I get here and of course none of the food is frozen and uh, it was pretty much holding up here at around 40 degrees. We check the condenser. Condenser's nice and clean. The refrigerant section here hasn't been tapped or it actually looks like it's been tapped, but they removed the uh, stems if they did do it. Uh, went off a feel and you know, it feels hot here and mediocre there, but that's only so good. So right now I'm waiting for this thing to warm up so that it'll bring on the uh, compressor. The coil's at 39, generally right about now is when it would bring it on. We set the control at five, the, that's the normal setting. There it is, just came on at 39. So now we're gonna see what it drops down to. The factory tells you to pull the fans out and then stick a thermometer in the center of the uh, coil there and see what it kicks out at. Generally, it's around 17, 18 degrees. We can look it up to see exactly which one it is. But what can happen is when the thing gets low on refrigerant is it'll get down somewhere into the uh, 20s, but not quite down low enough into the teens where it was shut off at. And uh, this is one of the starter methods that uh, True tells you to use to find out whether or not it's charged correctly or not. So before I go tapping into it and disturbing the refrigerant charge, I'd like to see whether or not it's that or if it's a thermostat issue. Now if we get really low down in there and it just doesn't shut off, that right off at 15. Gotta love it when things work correctly when you get there. I'm gonna say the thermostat's probably our issue. Okay, fan blades and stuff are a little bit yucky, so we're gonna get these cleaned up. The grills aren't too bad, but we'll clean them anyhow. And uh, checking to see which thermostat that takes. I have the electronic one on my truck. Looks like the uh, fan motors are starting to lose oil. That's not good. Got them all cleaned up. Everything's looking pretty good there. Yeah, both those th uh, motors there have got quite a bit of oil on them. Yeah, definitely quite a bit of oil on them. I'm gonna recommend they change them. Leave that up to them, let them make the decision. All right, went ahead and pulled out the thermostat. It's an 831932. There's your 891932. Follow it over, 40 degree cut in, 18 degree cut out. All this stuff can be found at truemanufacturing.com. Just go there and look it up, download it. You can pretty much print all this different stuff for the different books. Make yourself up a book, make it nice and easy. The uh, retro kit here is the one that's uh, called for. Um, it shut off a little bit lower than 18, so we're gonna go ahead and change this out. Uh, refrigerant wise, it appears to be working fine. So the only thing left then is the uh, thermostat. So we'll go ahead and get that changed. This one here uh, senses coil temperature to come on and box temperature shut off. So it's the best of both worlds. All right, while well, we got this down, I'm gonna go ahead and scan it for gas leaks. And uh, I'm gonna clean off this coil. All right, got 120 volts there, black wire. The pink wire with the black stripe is my power wire coming into my control. The white one there obviously is my neutral. Tapped in up there, use their three uh, piece connector. Then you want to make sure that that uh, doesn't break when you uh, close the door. So, by pushing that in and the power is still there, we know we're good. And then we've got the temperature sensor mounted right there, so it's going to pull the air right across it when it uh, is running. I got it in place ahead of time and then fed it through the back side of this. Makes it a little easier than try to put it in place and hook it up. Um, the pointy thing uh, was on bottom before, now it's on top. You have no choice because of the way it's placed in there. The body of that is too big. Uh, ran the uh, wire there through the evaporator and wire tied it in place. And then this here, I'm gonna wire tie these all up and make them look a little bit nicer. Just like that right there. So we'll just put her back up and we should be pretty much ready to go. Everything's back together. All the grills are in, everything's cleaned up there. 
We've got our thermistor here. We're gonna sit there and watch and see how the temperature it shuts off at. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and let it get started. We've already checked and made sure all the fan blades do not hit anything. Give it a little while and see what we get. All right, it just shut off right at about 30. And uh, it won't come back on until it hits about 38 to 40 degrees area. Product temperature will maintain uh, the safe limits there and uh, we should be good to go. I just checked to see if there's any relays down below and there is none. Sometimes those can stick on you. But other than that, I mean, you can see it's already jumping right back up. So it overshoots just a little bit on purpose. And then, uh, like I said, it's gonna control it off the uh, evaporator temperature. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to watch. Chart at the yeah. 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 I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to watch the video. If you would, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you check the description down below. You can check out some of the different toolkits that I put together. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.